Brother Ben, would you open some prayer, please? Thank you, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We pray, Lord, for our services this morning. This Brother Will, she brings the devotion. Each teacher, as we study your word, we bring the lesson 630. Brother Cody, she brings the message to lay on his heart, Lord. We pray for decisions to be made. We continue to pray, Lord, for our revival. We be with our speaker, be with our members that they feel in their hearts the need to come out and to worship you and to study your word. Go with us now through this service. Forgive me my sin and forget all my name. Amen. 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 Good morning again. The title of the devotional this morning, Jesus is Dead, Fulfilled Prophecy. And it comes from John chapter 19, <coughs> verses 23 and 24. <coughs> Here's the, the story of the crucifixion of our Savior. It says, Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to each soldier a part, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. <coughs> they said, therefore, among themselves, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which says they divided my garments among them, and my, for my clothing they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things. The whole life of Jesus was, was fulfilled in prophecy. It was prophetically given all through the Old Testament. His birth, his life, his, his crucifixion, his resurrection, his lordship. All the Old Testament is about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he fulfilled every single thing. And we're going to look at that this morning, a little bit of what it's talking about. Our devotional writer, Miss Beverly, said at the time of Jesus' death, crucifixion was a humiliating way to die because the condemned person was crucified naked. All of their garments, or anything considered valuable assets, were, were divided. And these Roman soldiers were usually the ones who were right there that were able to get these things. You know, we've seen movies like uh, there's a more modern western that they, they came out with with Gene Hackman and they, you know, gunfight and whenever the, the loser would get killed, they would go and just strip him of all his clothes, his <coughs> boots, his guns, everything. So this is, 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 is what's happened all through time. If anything happens, people get your values. Folks, if you die today, there may be somebody out there waiting to see what you got. Amen. <coughs> There's always something. We can't take it with us. But anyway, these soldiers, they, they cast lots for the, the most important and the most beautiful garment that Jesus had. They didn't want anything to happen to it. They wanted it in one piece. It says, while the, the soldiers were dividing the garments, they came to his coat. This is the outer garment and noted that it did not have a seam, making it more valuable. It would fulfill the scripture written by David many years before Jesus' death on the cross. Psalms 22, 18, they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. She says, can you imagine being the winner of Jesus' coat? And she, and she goes on to describe how she would hope that this turned out for this Roman soldier. She says, perhaps to the winner, it became a constant reminder of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Every day that coat stained with the precious blood of Jesus was a reminder of the innocent being sacrificed for the guilty. She says, hopefully, one day that soldier bowed his head and said, truly, he is the Son of God, Messiah, King, Savior of the world, my Savior. That's what she hoped in. The, in the world of that day, at the time of that cross, it's the same way as it is today. There were people there who hated Jesus. They hated God. They hated what he stood for. They claimed he was a blasphemer. But there was people there that day that also loved Jesus. They loved him. They loved God. They, they believed on him as, as Lord and Savior. And that's what she's hoping happened to this Roman soldier. We should hope this happens to everybody. Amen. That everybody one day before this life ends will bow the knee and claim that Jesus is Lord. You know, because we tend to be harsh in thinking, you know, if I was there, I wouldn't have done that, or, or whatever we might think. It, it's easy to look down on people that did things like this, but there's one thing for certainty that Jesus did sacrifice himself for those soldiers. 
He sacrificed himself mm. so the people that pierced him, nailed him to the cross, who beat him, whipped him, mocked him, pulled his hair out, did everything they did so that they could have eternal life. He did that. He's the only one that is worthy. None of us, when we get to thinking about these Roman soldiers, none of us are worthy. If you want to turn to Revelation chapter 5, we're going to look at that, this, this worthy lamb. Beginning in verse 1, this is John, said, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to even look at it. Who is no one? Not one. Hmm. None. Out of all the angels that's ever been created who served God faithfully, they weren't worthy. Nobody in heaven, nobody on earth up to that time, not Adam, not Isaiah, not Nehemiah, not Moses, not Noah, not the great prayer warrior Hannah, not even Mary, the very vessel that God chose to bring his son into this world was found worthy to open that scroll or to even look at it. None of the disciples. John, given the greatest opportunity probably that any of us could ever hope for, was given a vision of the throne room of heaven, of God, of all of, all of his glory, of everything. Not even he was worthy to take this scroll and to open it. This Savior that was crucified on Calvary's cross, that they, that they parted his 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 garments, and they gambled for them. None of these people, not even John. He said, so I wept much. I wept much because no one was found. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. And he came, took a scroll out of the right of the hand of him who sat on the throne. When we get to thinking about these Roman soldiers, and we get to thinking about all the people who crucified our Lord, who, who committed all sorts of atrocities through the years and con continue to commit them today, that same Jesus who was worthy to take that scroll is the one who was nailed to the cross. And none of us in this world are worthy. When we get to thinking about the drug addict, when we get to thinking about the pedophiles, when we get to thinking about all the people who uh, do whatever that we may think is the most atrocious things on this planet, John said not even one, not even the angels of heaven was found to be worthy to take that scroll from the hand of God. Amen? But Jesus was. Thank God as horrible as it was that he sacrificed himself on that cross. Amen. Thank God for the prophecies that foretold of it. Thank God that he has the power to make those prophecies come true. Amen. Because if it was in our hands, it would never happen. The billions born before, and just think about the billions that's been born since, that's been saved and filled with the Spirit of God, was not even worthy. But Jesus is. Thank God in heaven. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of gathering here at your church today, Lord. We thank you for the sacrifice of your son on the cross, Lord. And, and for those Roman soldiers, I, Lord, I pray, just as Miss Beverly does, that that soldier came to know Jesus as his Savior before he left this earth. Father, we thank you that you sent your son as a perfect sacrifice, Lord. And, and, and we all understand that, that we come up short, that we're not worthy to be the one to, to loosen that scroll, Lord, who, who deserves to be worshipped and honored like Jesus is, Lord. But we thank you for it too, Lord. We thank you that Jesus is found worthy and faithful and honorable and worth all the praise and the worship and the honor that you bestowed upon him, Father. We thank you for that. We thank you that he empowers your churches here on this earth today, Lord. And we pray like, like the prayer is for that Roman soldier that people will come to know Jesus and the free pardon of sin before it's too late that he sacrificed himself, he gave himself, he shed his blood, that we might stand before you one day 
that this vision that you gave John, that one of these days we'll all stand before you, Father. And I just pray that we stand before you as saved souls. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.